Welcome back. We are back and better than ever. Shez, how are you doing today? Oof, tired as usual. You can't be tired. We're three days removed from the start of your home Grand Prix. Come on, we're going. where's the energy? Nice. It is now my home Grand Prix. I can't wait. In fact, I'm pretty keen to see some of you guys out there. So if anyone's at the Melbourne Grand Prix this weekend, uh, give me a shout out. Um, I'd love to say hello. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and drop your social in in the video as well, so people can can reach out. And yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great to see a few of our um, our listeners, our our our, our viewers uh, out at the track too. So I unfortunately won't be there. Uh, I will be watching and cheering you on more than anything else. Uh, that that Thanks. is my highlight of this upcoming weekend is, is seeing you at track. Uh, <laughs> Maybe even <laughs> anyway. All right. So given that it is the Australian Grand Prix uh, and we uh, wanted to look at the McLaren drivers in part because one of the drivers is, you might have guessed it, Australian. Um, we have done a couple of videos that, um, well, one of them has been on on the two McLaren drivers and trying to figure out who's going to have the advantage over the other um, by season's end. Um, and within that, I believe I picked Piastri to come out in front of Lando. I can't remember what you did, Chess. Do you remember? Yeah, I think I did the same thing. I, I, I think Oscar's going to have the legs on Lando over the course of the season. That's right. So it, in today's episode, we'll take some time to dig into uh, what happened at the last Grand Prix in Saudi Arabia and comparing their uh, their their best qualifying laps uh, to see where the two drivers are at. So. Um, Shaz, I know this is your forte, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, uh, definitely not my forte, but we are, as we said last time, learning to read telemetry, which at the moment feels like trying to learn music. It's uh, it's really weird. Uh, but as I said before, we learn. Hopefully you guys learn too, and I hope you're all enjoying coming along on this little journey. But what we thought we'd try and do is, as you say, with the Australian Grand Prix coming up, we'll do a little... Lando versus Oscar um, and see how they their laps compared in, in Saudi. So Oscar goes pretty well in Saudi. He he uh, won the, the teammate head-to-head in 2023, came out ahead. And he did the same thing last weekend, uh, both in qualifying and in the race, but the margin was quite small. Um, uh, Oscar was, was only um, about a couple of hundreds um, quicker than than Lando over the course of the lap. Uh, but looking at the telemetry, we're going to have a little look at where that damage was done uh, and um, where where Lando started to pick up speed again. Um, so a couple of traces to look at. The first one uh, is us looking uh, essentially at sector one. So sector one in Saudi was um, the start-finish straight um, and then all the way up to just before the hairpin at turn 12. Uh, and on this telemetry slide, just to orientate us all again, on the horizontal axis, the X axis is the distance along the track. So that's from the start finish straight um, to just before turn 12. Um, and at the top is the speed trace. So on the Y axis, the, the vertical axis um, on the speed trace is the speed at every point. Um, and you can see two lines, a white line and an orange line. The white line is Lando and the orange line is Oscar. And whenever one line is higher up than the other, it means that that person's speed was higher than the others. Make sense? Indeed. Cool. Underneath that is the delta. So last time I said that I'd come back to this, but the delta is important here. The delta tells you how quick one driver was against the others, the other, um, what their time was compared to the other, um, compared to the fastest. So we know that the Oscar had the fastest lap of the two. So he's the straight orange line, and the white line is how far above or below Lando was at a particular point in the lap. So if he's below the orange line, that means he's slower than Oscar. If he's above the orange line, it means that he's faster. Mm -hmm. So you can see in this sector one trace, that they start off quite equal. And then as the sector progresses, Lando's speed is, the, the difference in time between him and Oscar 
gets further and further away. Um, and Lando is slower than Oscar in that trace. Does that make sense? So below below the orange line is slower. Mm -hmm. And then again, we've got the throttle and brake traces. Um, and as before, or along the vertical axis on both of those is throttle percentage. So how much of the throttle the driver is applying at the top of the line is 100%. At the bottom of the, the graph is 0%. And in the brake trace, at the top of the line is putting on the full brakes, and at the uh, at the bottom of the line is not applying any brakes at all. And one thing that we didn't do on the last telemetry slide was just to give you an idea of what the ups and downs on the speed trace mean. So, if you're if you're driving along the straight line and you're acceler and you're going down a straight in a Formula One car, you're going to be accelerating. So it means that from a uh, from a a low speed, you're going to a high speed, reaching your 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 highest speed at the end of the straight. So what you can see on the on the speed trace is that you can see at the beginning of the lap, there's a curve that gently travels up to meet a peak, and that is the terminal speed at the end of the straight. And then the speed suddenly drops. That's because both drivers are braking to go into turn one. So when the speed trace drops suddenly, that's where the drivers are uh, coming off the throttle and hitting the brakes. And the speed comes off as they turn into the corner. And then you can see at the bottom of that, at the pit of that line, as they come off the brake and reapply the throttle again, you can see that the speed trace goes up again to form that curve. And it's not a it's not a, a straight up curve because as they're applying the throttle, it takes time for the car to reach its terminal or its highest speed at the end of the next straight. So you get that gentle curve like that. And that's what you're seeing on the speed trace. Um, and I've circled here um, in yellow turns one and turns four for us to have a little look at uh, just to see where these guys uh, are, are making up time. So the first thing I wanted to look at was into turn four, actually. We can see that Oscar here breaks a little bit later, uh, and then they're both on the throttle at the same time. And although Oscar, in the at the end of the, the last corner, carries a little less speed at the minimum at, at, at the bottom of that trace. So his that's his minimum speed in the corner is slightly lower than Lando's. He, they both carry similar speed to the end of the next straight. So they get to the, so even though Oscar's a bit slower in out coming out of turn two, by the time they get to turn four, they're carrying about the same amount of speed. So Oscar breaks a little bit later. They're both on the throttle about the same time. And then, um, and by the time they get to the end of that straight, so going into turn, uh, six to ten oscar's carrying a bit more speed you can see that on the on the speed trace coming out um uh, on the on the top graph the second thing to look at is coming out of turn uh coming out of turn three so there's there's a, there's a chicane turn two turn three and coming out of turn three they both have a little wobble and that's why the the throttle trace isn't full throttle coming out of turn uh coming out of turn Five. So they have a little wobble um, and probably the back end steps out. Um, if you look at Max Verstappen's uh, throttle trace for the same segment, he's flat. So he doesn't have that wobble and his car just stays completely stable, whereas these guys are having a little correction. And then through the turn six to eight complex, where last time when we looked at this, the Mercedes car, uh, the Mercedes pair both had to lift off quite heavily um neither of these drivers are having to do that same as what max was having to do is it was just straight flat and then the the final thing to to look at in this is the turn eight to ten segment so it's the 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 the, the second um curve just before they get onto the straight for the hairpin both drivers have to lift off and in fact, um, Max had to do the same thing here as well. When we when we have a little look at his trace from uh, from last week, but on the throttle trace, remember I said that 
at the top of the trace is 100% throttle and at the bottom of the trace is 0% throttle and everything in between is, is a percentage of that. So the lower your line is, the less throttle you're, apply, you're applying. And you can see they go from having full throttle to having less throttle and then back up to having, uh, having high throttle again. That to me suggests that, that they're having a lift in the middle of that corner to stabilize the car. But you can see in in this section that I've circled here that Lando lifts a lot more than Oscar does. But weirdly, on the speed trace, Lando's still carrying more speed through that segment. And mm. um, somebody in the comments is going to need to explain to me why that why that is. That I don't understand. Why is it that Lando lifts more than Oscar does, but seems to carry more speed through eight and ten? Because they seem to carry the same amount of speed roughly into the corner mm. uh, or into that curve. Uh, and Oscar certainly seems to catch up again uh, into the next straight. Um, unless you know, Amar, maybe you can tell me. No, I don't. I don't. I'm yeah. hoping one of our viewers will help us out. Please. Answers on a postcard or just in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. So the next slide is us looking at sectors and um, the end of sector two and into sector three, and this is a uh, this is a sector that's sort of um, characterised by big straights and then two big two big braking moments. The first is into turn twenty two, and the other is into turn twenty seven, which is the final corner before the start finish straight again. And again, you can see that there's a, a, a gentle up curve to a to a peak speed, and then a sudden drop off, and that's turn twenty two, uh, and then the second one is to turn twenty seven. Okay, those are the two corners, really. Uh, and you can see that um, Oscar reaches a, um, a higher terminal speed at the end of um, uh, at the end of the straight going into turn 22. Um, but the interesting point in this is actually if you look at sector, if you look at the delta here, you can see that Lando is gradually getting closer to him. And actually by the end of the lap is faster than, than Oscar is going into the final corner. Um, and there's a few little things here to dive into about sort of why that's uh, why that might be happening. The first is that um, Oscar does break a bit earlier than, than Lando does into turn 22. And um, he's got a slower minimum speed so he's actually slower at the at the at the at the apex of the corner um but he does make up for it slightly by being a bit quicker on the throttle than lando is but not by enough really and um, he is more aggressive uh, than lando is and you can see that at the top of the trace although both of them have another little wobble at the end of the um at the exit but the next slide, I think, is what was really interesting to me. And it's the DRS traces. So Oscar seems to apply his DRS later than Lando does and comes off it again earlier than Lando does. Both of their both of their DRSs come um, come off roughly at the time that they hit the brakes. Um, and DRS is an interesting one. There's two ways that you can turn off your DRS while you're driving around. You can either... Um, as soon as you break, it automatically um, automatically brings the flap back down into its um, off setting, or you can press a button on the on the steering wheel. Um, and it's interesting to hear how different drivers do it. So, for example, uh, we know from Monza 2018 uh, when Marcus Ericsson had his big DRS failure going into turn one, that 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 Ericsson liked to just hit the brakes. And, and let the and, and automatically let the DRS flap close, whereas Charles liked to press a button on the on the steering wheel, so he would have a bit more control over when it closes. It seems like these two, um, Oscar and Lando, don't do that. Or it might be that their that their deactivation of DRS and their braking um, are timed fairly simultaneously, but there's just enough control in what they do. Um, to, to, to make it worthwhile doing it off the off the steering wheel. I, I don't know the answer to that. Again, maybe somebody can educate me in the comments, but certainly what seems to be the case here is um, Oscar maybe isn't maximising the amount of maximum speed that he can have down that straight um, because he's not activating his his DRS as much um, for as long as, as Lando is. Uh, so that is roughly what I got. So certainly... 
for me, in summary, Oscar made up most of his time in sector one, um, especially in the in the fast transitions and being a bit more committed to the throttle. Um, whereas Lando in the fast uh, in the fast section at the end of the lap um, started to make up time was quicker into the final corner. So I think um, this to some extent uh, corroborates what we've heard about right throughout the weekend, which Oscar was very impressive in his run. Right. And the one thing I didn't want to sort of go back to, right, is I kept hearing all weekend about how McLaren is not efficient with its DRS as well. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I wonder if some of the um, some of the late activation, if you will, had, had something to do with that, where maybe the drivers knew that they would have either a better chance of, of setting a faster lap by virtue of not opening the flap, which just sounds ridiculous to say. But, um, yeah, there might be uh, something yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the thing with the efficiency, though, is that they it was just that they weren't gaining as much speed by opening their yep. DRS as other people were. Mm -hmm. But they were still gaining speed. It was still sort of six or seven kilometers an hour quicker to open your DRS than not. So right. you're not going to lose time by opening your DRS on a straight um, necessarily. But but it, it might just be that you're not gaining as much as others. Um, and perhaps you're right. Perhaps both drivers favored a bit more stability. But I, I'm not sure I can quite see that being an advantage going down a straight, yeah. um, especially if you're actually not losing that much downforce by opening your drs yeah uh, it probably doesn't for me it doesn't make sense to not open your drs as much no i would agree with you i just i didn't know if from a technical standpoint it would make sense to to just opt for that stability a little bit more and again not knowing what the what the difference would be one way or another is, is really hard um but i mean in in totality it seemed like um, you know, I mean, Oscar did have a great weekend, not just in qualifying, but also in the race. I mean, it it just ended up being that that was the best they could really do, um, right? Um, and, and so, I mean, they stuck behind Ferrari and, and two Red Bulls. Uh, it's about what he could do. So I think to some extent that makes sense. And then, of course, yeah. winning the race. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely set up his weekend. And it uh, probably bodes well for, for Melbourne, which has some really same. fast corners. Turn, the turn 9, 10 segment is right. is all about commitment. It's all about high-speed stability, which what which is what the McLaren seems to thrive on. That The, the, the fact that the, the Oscar was was able to use more throttle going through the turn 8 to 10 complex in Saudi, even more than what Max was able to do bodes well for how, how it's going to perform in Melbourne. So I look forward to seeing what Oscar can do. And uh, I, I, I think it will be a track that will potentially suit um, suit the McLaren again. Uh, so it'll be fun to see what they do. Well, and, uh, and and this is now sort of pulling it back a little bit, right? But last year's Australian Grand Prix was <laughs> was quite chaotic. So it, it will be interesting to see what this year's race will look like. Um, it, yeah. I can't wait for it. I'm looking forward. Yeah. Looking forward to it too. And uh, as we said, please come and visit us if you can. And um, thanks to F1 Tempo again for, for, for letting us uh, use their um, graphs and their... Uh, and their telemetry. Uh, you'll find the link in the description uh, to their website and their uh, Twitter bio. Um, please have a look there. It's it's actually a huge amount of uh, fun if you've got the time and inclination uh, to just bring up different um, telemetries for different drivers on different days at different tracks. Um, you can you can learn a lot. I think. And hopefully we can get the two Ferrari drivers to be in, in, in the cars at the same time and not have brake issues like, like Charles did in, in Bahrain. And, um, and then of course, Carlos didn't, didn't appear in, in Saudi. Uh, we, we can, we can next compare the Ferrari drivers. So I'm looking forward to that comparison in Melbourne, Amara. Over to you, my friend. Looking forward to it. Thanks for watching.